Good morning, Cattle Market News. Shaley Stewart here with your Cattle Market News tip sheet brought to you in part by DTN. Here to do what we always do and get you caught up in the cattle market. And this is a new one for us. You know, we've obviously endured a lot since I started sharing these videos. We've endured packing plant fires. We've endured cyber attacks. We've endured a global pandemic. But we've never endured a war together. And I think one of the hardest things to realize in the cattle market is that, you know, when we dive into the cattle market or when you fancy yourself with wanting to learn more about the cattle market, you believe that it's going to be all about cattle. But it's funny that when you begin to crack the code of the cattle market, sometimes the market has very little to do with cattle. And that's exactly what's happening right now. You know, as, as the war in Ukraine and Russia continues to advance and a spiral out of control, it seems like the cattle market is focusing on one thing right now and one thing only, and that is war. And so we're going to go ahead and talk about the specifics of last week's market. And I want you to realize the ramifications in which war can have on a market because this is a perfect example. And as we move forward in the weeks and months to come, we need to also remember that let's say the war ended tomorrow. The ramifications in which Russia's war on Ukraine would have astronomical effects on the market market for the weeks and months to come even still because the cattle market isn't necessarily comeback king as you guys know and so we've we've eroded to lows in the market in which we haven't seen for over months and so as we uh, now look at the the future and the trajectory of the market we have to realize that this is going to be a a slow comeback now the frustrating thing about this is that as cattlemen we hope and we pray and we wish that the markets just reacted off of fundamentals sure a little technical analysis here and there too we get that we understand that the future market is a big part of the market but we so long for a market that that really trades off of fundamentals and that's not what the market's doing right now but that doesn't mean that you're to panic that you're to lose your mind that you're to puke cattle send them to the sale barn and just give up on all hope because while we're balancing this notion of war markets and realizing that the market isn't trading on our strong fundamentals we also know that once the market does become infatuated with cattle facts again and the simple fact of where we're at in our drought situation, where we're at in our beef cow uh, liquidating phase and where we're at in regards into supply and demand, that there's going to be immense opportunity. So again, we have another hurdle. We have another headwind. We have something that we have to overcome, but we're going to do it. So let's go ahead and talk about the specifics of last week. That way you can get caught up on the market today. Let's go ahead and talk about your Friday to Friday livestock contract changes. This is what the futures market did compared to the previous Friday by last week's end. So April live cattle lost $6.15 throughout the week. June live cattle fell $5.78 throughout the week. March feeder cattle fell $6.90 and April feeder cattle fell $7.50. Jumping right on into your fat cattle trade. Most of the week's trade took place on Wednesday with a little bit of cleanup trade on Thursday and Friday. And packers, you know what? Their business is to buy cattle cheap. That way they can make money on the meat and there's more margin for them to absorb in the middle and they are going to use this as an opportunity to hinder the cash cattle market to rally this spring you know it i know it and everybody else knows it too and so we have a lot of folks asking our do we have our cash cattle market high for the spring of 2022 it's a beautiful question, and I'm really worried that that might be the case indeed. So, nevertheless, this week we're expecting fat cattle to trade steady at best, if not lower. Packers not only are going to be able to use the, the, the psychological realm of war in the marketplace and, and bid cattle cheaper and lower, but they've also got cattle committed with time. So, not only do they not need to support the cash cattle market because they already have some cattle committed for this time, but they're also going to be able to play on the market psyche. So, nevertheless, it's not looking necessarily great for your fat cattle market right now. In the Southern Plains, live cattle last week traded for $1.38 to $1.41, mostly at $1.40, which is considered $2 lower compared to the previous week. In the Northern Plains, dress cattle sold for $2.21 to $2.29, mostly at $2.25, and that as well is considered $2 lower. Last week's volume of negotiated cash cattle trade told 75,674 head, of which 70% were committed for the nearby delivery and 30% were committed for the deferred delivery. Last week's slaughter, thank Thankfully, we're continuing to push cattle through processing um, as quickly, really, as possible. Thankfully, last week's slaughter is estimated at 658,000 head. That's 11,000 head more than the previous week, but 8,000 head less than a year ago. Talking about box beef trends, we, we are expecting box beef trends to bottom here any day now and uh, start climbing higher as folks start to think about summer and what that might mean. 
obviously war is going to have an effect on that too. Um, what are what are we going to do as consumers as inflation continues to uh, increase and as everything gets more expensive, but nevertheless, beef demand continues to be strong here domestically and internationally. Choice cuts last week averaged two fifty five seventy two. That was down five dollars and eleven cents compared to the previous week. And select cuts averaged two fifty forty nine, down eight dollars and thirty nine cents throughout the week, with a total movement of cuts, grinds, and trim totaling six hundred and thirty nine loads. Let's talk about these carcass weights. For the week ending February 19th, which is the most um, recent actual solder data presented by the USDA, steers averaged 921 pounds, which was 3 pounds higher than the previous week and 12 pounds higher than a year ago. Heifer carcasses averaged 849 pounds, that's a, that's a pound higher than the previous week and 8 pounds higher than a year ago. Let's talk about your fresh beef imports. So last week they totaled 24,149 metric tons with again, and it's probably going to be this way all throughout the year as this is how it shakes down your fresh beef importers your largest fresh beef importers being brazil Canada and Mexico. Let's go ahead and shift gears and talk about your beef exports coming in at 23,800 metric tons with your largest buyers being South Korea, China, and Japan. And I know a lot of you are interested in this feeder cattle market and as we move forward there's obviously going to be a lot of pressure on the feeder cattle market. The price of grain is absurd. Everybody's worried about what's going to happen next summer and people are already puking cattle. They're just saying, you know what, send them to, to town this week. We don't want to take the gamble. Hey, prices are too expensive. There's already too many cattle in the feedlot. We don't know if we're going to get enough um, moisture for next summer. And so they're just saying, send them, send them, send them. Whether you've watched watched receipts yesterday or you're uh, seeing what the lineup of sales are today here on Tuesday, you're seeing a lot of cattle make their way into sale barns. So um, last week, let's go ahead and talk about those prices though. In the Southeast, prices were considered $1 to $5 higher with the rest of the country trading anywhere from steady to $4 lower. So we're gonna start off in your North Central region. I know I'm giving them to you in a little different format this week, but your North Central region is Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, North North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, Nebraska, and Iowa. Steers weighing six to 700 pounds um, traded about, oh, steady with a week ago, but realistically 30 cents higher than a year ago. Steer calves weighing seven to 800 pounds traded $3 lower, and your eight to 900 pounds traded about $3 lower as well. In your South Central region, that is New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri, your five to 600 pound steers traded a dollar higher, your six to 700 pound steers traded a dollar higher as well, and your seven to 800 pound steers, they traded $4 lower. So again, you're continuing to see a lot of interest in your lighter weights and the calves that, or excuse me, the feeders that should go into feedlots right now per se, you're not seeing a whole lot of interest in them just because right now the market, as buyers look at the market, is too much of a gamble. They don't know exactly what the price of corn is going to be. They don't know exactly how the live cattle market is going to fare throughout the summer. So there's a lot of question. There's a lot of volatility. There's a lot of vulnerability in our markets right now. And in the southeast region, that's Arkansas, Louisiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, Alabama, Georgia, or Mississippi, excuse me, Georgia, Florida, and North and South Carolina, your four to 500 pound steers traded $7 higher, your five to 600 pound steers traded uh, $4 higher, and your six to 700 pound steers, they traded $9 higher, or excuse me, $4 higher, excuse me. Nevertheless, Shaley Stewart here with your Cattle Market News tip sheet brought to you in part by DTN. We're, in, we're enduring a time in which war is the forefront of the market's mind. Continue to remember that your cattle are indeed assets. They might not look like assets in today's market because everything's bleeding lower, but you know what? Given the right opportunity, they are indeed assets. So continue to be diligent in looking at the markets from a very analytical point of view, not an emotional point of view, and pray for the Ukrainians. Talk chat later, guys. Take care.